Good, good intro there, Rafik. Um, I think you've cleared up a lot of things that, uh, any questions that they might have had. Um, what I'm going to be doing, Rafik touched on uh, the WordPress, uh, how it works, and obviously from, a, from an SEO perspective, but also the link building, how important it is, the social media, all these different sort of channels that we have. Um, but basically, if your, if your website isn't set up correctly, the links don't, aren't really utilized as well as they should be. So the plugin um, that I've that we, that we use um, is Yoast. Uh, I came across it about six six to eight months ago. I previously was using another one and just found this one um, to be much more uh, detailed, in depth, and be able to use uh, everything possible. It also it also combines a couple of other plugins, so you're actually minimizing the amount of plugins on WordPress and um, if you're using quite a few plugins, it does actually slow your website down. So you want to keep your, your plugins uh, quite, quite small. All right, so first up, the general settings. Um, we have keywords. Um, obviously, Google, for you that don't know, Google don't look at keywords just because people spammed it uh, a few years back, so they kind of just took that out. But I like to leave it in um, just because it helps you as a writer, if you're doing writing, it'll help you understand what you're writing for, what sort of keywords you're targeting. So it's a subconscious sort of thing. Okay, well, I'm targeting this keyword for this page. Let's just leave it in, in the editing area within the post. All right, the others, uh, you, want to, you want to leave these unticked, the disabled date in snippets preview for posts. What that does is it'll take that 2nd of Feb 2011 out. And with blog posts, Google uh, search automatically puts that in. So you actually want to see what your search snippet would look like once it's fully optimized. So, so leave that unticked just for, for your own purposes. Um, and then you want to leave everything else unticked. Um, the edit pages, you want to leave everything. You want to be able to edit the post, the page, the attachment. And you want to be able to edit the categories and post tags. And like Rafik said earlier about tags, uh, not a great thing. Um, although it's great for navigation, but from a search perspective, it just, yeah, it just does uh, create duplicate content. So there was a question asked about how do we no index or how do we get rid of that that that's uh, within the search results, and I'll just show you now um, how we we do that and the indexation. All right, so this is the indexation page. I've left out there's a there's a spot there for Facebook. I personally don't really like it. It's a bit too technical. Um, the other plugins that can Incorporate the Facebook like, like uh, FB like button is, is pretty good. That's the one that we use. Um, so indexation rules, we've got um, what, do you, what do you don't want to index? So the search results page, we generally don't want to uh, index that within Google, um, purely because of the duplication content issues. The login and register pages, there's no need for that to, to be in the, the search result pages. If that comes up and someone lands on it, be a bit random. It's also got no content on, so it actually devalues the overall um, structure of your website in terms of content, because what are you actually telling Google um, about your website? And on a login page, you can't really tell much. <coughs> Again, admin pages, you want to take out the index, so you put a no index on there. Sub pages of the home page, personally, just personal preference, I like to keep that uh, open and being able to be indexed. Archives and taxonomies, Again, um, sub-pages, it's probably good to be indexed. Author archives, um, obviously it is a case of duplication of content, but if someone Googles you, um, how would they find you if it's not being indexed? So it's a good way uh, just to, to, improve, to improve your visibility on the web. Category archives is a case of duplication of content, but we have seen that uh, through clients, websites have been uh, ranked quite well on a category page, and it's in terms of hierarchy, it's high up in a tag. A tag can spew, up, spew out a lot of uh, duplication. So, un untick the the category, leave that indexable, and tick the tag archives because that obviously, as as Rafik says, uh, can cause a problem. And then just again, no follows. You don't want any links that are going to your login pages. So a no follow. Uh, does anyone know, not know what a nofollow is? Um, everyone know what it is? <laughs> so basically, um, if you've got a, a link 
that has a no follow. You're basically telling the robots uh, that they mustn't um, in, go into that link and go onto the next page. So front end, um, visi visibly, you, there's there's no difference in that link. Um, but from a from a search bot perspective, if you put a no follow tag on it, uh, the search bot won't follow that link onto the next page. That's what it means. Um, so archive settings again. I don't know why they did that, but it's, it's pretty much the same as the one before. And then the robot meter set settings. So sometimes Google might um, bring in a, a search result or a snippet uh, from DMOZ. And DMOZ is a manually edited directory. Um, so your description within that directory, and some websites, it's quite difficult to be in it, but it's, it's still a good idea uh, to be in DMOZ. It might pull that description. So to have complete control over that, we just put a little tick on there to say that Google don't, don't bring any uh, description into my meter description. And a meter description, while I'm on that subject, I'll use uh, the meter description there is what you see over here. That's, that's the media description. So that you want to have complete control over. Right. And again, for, for no direct, uh, NOY directory, so that is no Yahoo directory. So again, if you're listed in the Yahoo directory, you don't want to have that um, in the, in, or be pulled from, from, uh, from Yahoo into your own meter description. You want to have control over it. And then leave, leave the ones, other ones unticked, uh, so you have control over that, over the no snippet, because if you, if you tick that, then obviously there will be no snippet anywhere within your site, and no archive, then obviously your categories and uh, author pages will have no media descriptions there. The head, I don't want to get into too much detail, but just make sure that that's what it looks like. The most important there is the hard WordPress generator from a, a spam and hacking perspective. If people go into your source code, they can see what, what version of WordPress you have, be it 2.1. whatever, 2.3.2. Um, that 2.3.2, they can actually see. So they know immediately uh, what to look for and how to hack it. So you want to you hide that so they can't see which version you're using. Okay. Is everyone with me? Still, still good. Title is probably the most important part of on-site optimization. Um, and this basically, you can set up the website structure to a point within this area. To edit the home page, you go there. You click on edit home page, and that will go to your actual edit page, whichever, is, uh, whichever you've set as your, as your home page, whatever page that may be, or your blog. Um, you edit it there. Post area and page you want to leave because this is a templatized area. So if you edit something here, if you edit a title, that's going to stream across all your posts. So then you kind of lose control over all your posts. And then your title tag will be the same. Exactly the same for pages, so you want to leave that as is. The taxonomies, for, it's probably the most important part here on the page, is how you can edit this. Um, to be able to control your, your, your actual uh, category page. So if I put my cursor over there, you can see there, industry news dash SEO blog dash web growth. That's, that's the title. And now I've got it set like that. And that little percentage sign over there, you can find right at the bottom. It gives you a whole list of what you want to pull. Do you want to pull the date? Do you want to pull the title? Do you want to pull the site name, the excerpt? Whole list to your disposal. So ideally you want to, to create some sort of individualistic category. You want to be able to pull whatever the, that, that category page is called. But you've got full control over this. And why you want to do that, let's call it news, for example. Why you want to do that is it gives Google a good idea, because obviously there's quite a few category pages that you could create within a blog. 
So with those titles, you can tell Google what exactly your blog is about. It's a good opportunity to say, okay, well, in my, in my title, we've got the category, and then it's about SEO news. Okay, so obviously the categories is telling me that this blog is about SEO, there's news, and then obviously the brand web growth. All right, so if I refresh this page, remember it was blog, SEO blog, it's now SEO news. So you've got an element of control there. And again, you can edit this, but that's going to be throughout every description, and you don't really want to do that. Author archives. This, you can insert the excerpt, but I'll show you now in a few moments how you can actually control that completely. So actually, we could actually just delete. We could leave that and delete this. I'll show you why now. Okay, so that's pretty much that, that area of the, the plugin. Okay. Sitemaps, very, very important. So what a sitemap is, it basically builds up a hierarchy of all your posts and pages within the website. And this Yoast plugin creates it for you. So you check that box, and then um, it creates it by saving, by saving this page right at the bottom. And then you can view it there. You can actually view the sitemap. I won't do that now, but you can see it. Once it's set up, you'll be able to see for yourself. And then add images. You want to add images. Again, because this also, yeah, it, it would help from an RSS perspective as well if it's in the, it's in the sitemap. Content publication, so just whenever your blog post is uh, created or a page is created, it'll ping those search engines. So you want to have those ticked, very important. And you want to leave that as is. Does that make sense? Okay, breadcrumbs. You'll notice in some search results, um, it'll pull in the, in the search results, it'll pull little um, areas of the, it's called site-wide site links. And this, what a breadcrumb does, is give Google idea of your page structure. So there you can see that the blog, that's a site-wide, uh, a site link, sorry. So you've got blog area, and you've got, for some random reason, Justin Bieber marketing areas. <laughs> But what that, what that breadcrumb does, it does help Google to understand the page structure. All right, and that's, and that's what a breadcrumb is there for you. Sorry, whoever doesn't understand what a breadcrumb is, that's it there. And it's also good for navigation. Um, if, that, if you go into a deeper page, you would obviously be able to click back onto industry news. So if I click on that, I could then go into blog, go back. So it just creates a good navigation for people to navigate through the site. And then obviously you can control it here. I said for, as an example, I said yeah, the prefix for the breadcrumb is you are here. Actually, it's not good to, to be there. Personally, I don't like it. Um, it's up to you, but I just wanted to show you what it does look like. So if I save that. It's now gone, which looks much more neater. Okay, and then you've also got control over that little um, separator. So I've chosen the, the bracket, triangular bracket. You could have a forward slash is another one you could use. So that's you've got complete control there. Other ones not so important. I'll just leave that out, but that's a good. Good structure to have right there. Okay. I spoke about categories earlier. You can actually edit the category. If you go to the category page within Yoast, you can just click there and edit directly. And then from there, you can edit the SEO title, the meter description, meter keywords, canonical. 
bread breadcrumbs title, you've got quite a lot of options there. Or if you want to individually no index it, sometimes maybe for some reason you want in your own no index it. So Google can't get to it. You could possibly do it there if you wanted to. Okay. RSS. Um, personally, I like to see RSS as being indexed. Um, it's just another way of telling Google what you're all about. Um, and the only tick box that you need there is ping the search engines with whenever there's a new post. Importing. Uh, I don't know how many of you use Yoast currently. And how many use other SEO pl plugins? And how many don't use SEO at all, the plugin? Okay. When you install, there's, there's other, there's one, all in one SEO, is quite a popular one as well. I used to use it, but got persuaded to use the Yoast just because it's, it's just so good. If you're importing data, because obviously you might have hundreds of posts, hundreds of pages, and it does take a bit of time if you had to redo all that, if you had to lose all that information, it could be quite a bugger. So use SEO Data Transporter. It's a plugin that you can install, and it'll transfer all your old uh, metadata, like your title tags, your media descriptions, and put it straight into uh, the new Yoast plugin that you've just installed. Uh, we learned a, quite a good lesson with the big client uh, that it's a good idea to use that because we... <laughs> We did it and it never actually, uh, we didn't use SEO data uh, transporter and we lost all the data. Luckily we got backups and everything. So very crucial, very, very good learning curve that we went through to use SEO data transporter when, you, when you're using another, when, when you're converting to Yoast. Okay. This is the tag page that I spoke about. Uh, earlier, you can edit this if you want to do it manually uh, to, from a no-index perspective, it's all here. If you want complete control, like it's just the same layout uh, as the uh, category page had. So you can edit there. And then moving on to the profile. So if I Google WordPress SEO, you can see uh, US Devolk, who's the... Uh, creator of Yoast. You can see just like Rafik had his name there uh, for that couple of searches that he had, that profile came up with that image. There's a theory which we're busy testing. Um, you can do a markup, as Rafik explained, but people are going around in the forum saying that we could just insert the profile link, which we are busy testing at the moment. So if you insert, it's a very easy way of doing it, so if you insert your profile link into your your Google Plus profile link into your actual author profi profile, uh, they are saying that it's actually returning that image. So we're busy testing that at the moment. If it does work, well, it'll be much a much easier way of doing things. Okay. So when actually editing a post, this is the area you do it. So yeah, you've got your post, you've got the content, and then below there you've got WordPress SEO by Yoast. The focus keywords, so whatever the focus of that page is, you, you type in that keyword, and then you start punching in whatever your title want to be. So this is a blog about how to budget for search engine marketing. Uh, just a heads up, if, when writing a title tag, the keywords that appear in the beginning are the most important uh, in Google's eyes. The ones that go towards the end of the title tag are the least important. It's quite a good little technique to use. So we want to go, say, budget SEO search engine marketing. We could add the word for just so it make, looks like it's... English. I try and stay away from those joining words, but I, case by case, sometimes would want to put it in. And then let's just put web growth. All right, so that's what the search result will, will look like. All right, so now you've got 
That's just a good little thing there. So you've targeting SEO. It's in the title tag. It's picked it up. Now you want to write some media description. So say how to budget for search engine marketing. <coughs> SEO. As soon as I typed in SEO, the media description popped in there. So now you know, okay, cool, that's sorted. Generally, you want a couple of more characters. Something like that. Typos, but just for purposes, it's all good. And then uh, the meter keywords again. So not really important, but it literally takes one second to do. Why not just do it, just for the sake of doing it? And that's what, and that's what uh, you can do there in terms of the on-site optimization. Then you go on to page analy analysis. analysis. And you can start looking at, okay, what are the errors? Where can I improve my copy? Okay, well, let's just save this first. Okay, I can't get to that side of my PC. But basically, that just gives us a good idea of where you're at. So keyword density, the fourth one down, 0.6%, maybe a bit low. Maybe we should just introduce our keyword. It's a really good idea uh, to look at this, especially if, you, if you're blogging, if you're in the, the publishing industry, just to understand what it takes. Obviously, this is just a tool, and it's a, a robot telling you this, or a program telling you this. So it's not going to be 100%, and there are going to be times where you won't be able to do it perfectly. But it just gives you a good idea, it keeps you honest, keeps you humble in terms of, okay, well, where am I at? So that's, that's quite a cool little tool there. And then advanced, if you want this page indexed, which generally you would want to do that. Uh, meter robots followed, yes. Um, meter robots advanced, no. No. But remember, we've actually got that set up uh, by default within the main thing, so that doesn't really matter. Breadcrumbs, I wouldn't really worry about, not too important. What is the most important here is if you are duplicating content. So you don't want to be accused by Google of duplicating content, and if you are taking another page or another post and uh, you're inserting it into your own blog, but you may be putting in a few tidbits of your own, and you feel that maybe it's too much of a duplication, you just put in the original URL there. And that's what Rafik spoke about earlier. And that's where you can put it. Don't get too scared about duplication of content. Um, we do duplicate now and again, but I, I'd imagine we look at about 85 to 90%, 90%. If your website's 90% original, you're good. Don't, get, don't stress out for too much um, if you have the odd blog post that's duplicated. You won't get penalized. Or well, don't quote me, but yeah, you shouldn't. <coughs> okay. And that is the basic optimization of Yoast. Uh, cool. cool. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much.